Tis I. Hey everyone, glad to see you back, glad to see you looking fresh, and today we're going to go take a trip back to the humongous entertainment retrospective here on my channel, our humongous journey, and we're going to take a look at the second Freddy Fish game, that being Freddy Fish in the case of the Haunted Schoolhouse. So without further ado, roll the intro. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Krabby. So, Freddy Fish 2, of course, takes place mostly centered around the schoolhouse, which, I'm going to put it bluntly, straight up, is quite a step down from saving the entire ocean. This time, we're saving a schoolhouse from a ghost. That is stealing toys. Okay, that's our premise for this game. And of course, our school teacher isn't going to help us. Why would the adult in the situation help? She's going to sit here and protect the guppies while we, two children, go and solve the case. Okay, so we find the ghost hiding in the basement, and a piece of cloth gets ripped off. Lo and behold, this ghost isn't a real ghost. And we have to devise a trap to catch the fiend. So Freddy Fish pieces together uh, an elaborate mouse trap sort of looking thing. And we have to find the rest of the pieces that we need. And this is where our split paths come in. So it's pretty obvious like sometimes you'll have to find different pieces to this puzzle. And not every playthrough is exactly the same. Which is something I love about Humongous Entertainment Games. The replayability shoots way up because of that. And this game is no different. So this one, we need to find rope, we need to find a pulley, we need to find a diving helmet, and we even need to find something called the Mock Stop Mibble Bop Walker Bucker, which can be found by our old pal Ray, who we remember in the last game traded us the Super Duper Duper Booka Poly Gizmo. And this thing, the Mock Stop Mibble Bop Walker Bopper, is not as iconic as the Super Duper Duper Booka Poly Gizmo, but it is... Almost as much fun to say. And Ray, this time, instead of wanting a timepiece, wants a used trophy. Which is so ultra-specific that it can only be found in a point-and-click adventure game like this. Like, what other game is like, hey, I need a used trophy. Not a new trophy, not like a brand new, like, I won, I feel like I deserve to win kind of trophy. A used trophy. Cool. So, of course, Freddy Fish, being the brilliant one she is, has won a spelling bee in the past. So we can go and get her trophy that she has won. She's going to trade her trophy to capture the ghost. But in, before that, we have to go talk to Mr. Triple Finn. And Mr. Triple Finn has the code for the lock. And he calls us both boys. Which is a nice little moment because Freddy Fish, like, proudly proclaims that she's a girl. Excuse me, sir, but I'm not a boy. I'm a girl. And I do remember reading about some playtesting for this game a long time ago that when that part came up all the girls that would play this game kind of lit up like they had a one of these icons for themselves you know all of the humongous entertainment franchises can be played by boys and girls like it's never gender specific but having a, a female protagonist is a, is a big plus, especially in the 90s, it was a new thing, not a new thing, but it was still wasn't a more popular thing like it should have been, so it was a nice thing to have. Some of the other important beats of this game, we talked to Casey, who will return in future games, he lost his glasses down this tube, and it has a quick time event where you need to go the right way, and you can give glasses, and he gives you a slingshot with a an aiming reticle, and then you can use that later down the line to get yourself some more pe purple sea urchins. And the purple sea urchins are used to get a pulley in this one. So the pulley, I always thought looked a lot like a pair of headphones and not pulley <laughs> should look. Pulley in my mind is always like a singular wheel with a rope. That's like the most basic pulley in my mind. This one, I don't know how this pulley operates. Maybe I just haven't seen a lot of pulleys, but I always see a pair of headphones in this image, not a pulley. Some other interesting beat uh, with this. Past Casey, there are three screens which in my playthrough were entirely useless. Uh, like I said previously, the split paths in Humongous Games are my favorite thing about them. But it's interesting in this one where there are three screens that I could have just not gone to. 
because all of them are, are nice images. They're nice, you know, I love the look of all these games. So the art's wonderful. The music's wonderful. Uh, I get to talk to Tucker Turtle, but he doesn't have anything for me to do. This statue doesn't have anything for me to do in this area where you can see up to the sky it has nothing for me. But in other versions, Tucker Turtle will have a head stuck in a pipe. There will be a trident here to collect, and there will be uh, a worm on a hook for you to try to capture. But here, there's nothing. So I think better games down the line handle something like this a little bit better. And the thing with Tucker Turtle 2 is this part was in the demo of this game, which I played the demos a lot as a kid because it was just like, oh, a little bite size of other humongous games that I hadn't played before. And that's how I was able to get so many of these as a kid because I like knew what they were called and knew uh, what to ask for for like birthdays and stuff. But the Tucker Turtle part was the demo. And so it's always weird in my brain that there's a part of this game that's not always there. It's optional. It, it, it tweaks my brain a little bit because it's so iconic to me that it's, it's interesting that it's not a part of this playthrough. And I'm not, I don't know how often the things get rolled. I feel like the diving helmet's a pretty common one. I feel like I always had to get that, which is a weird thought. I hope this is just a scarecrow and not a real person <laughs> that fell to the ocean floor with a diving helmet on and kelp grew around it. And that's a little bit dark, but heck, the last game was a little bit dark too because if we didn't find all the kelp seeds, all the fish were going to die. It's like, it's pretty fish. Is, it, is this the darkest <laughs> of the Human Death Entertainment franchises? Maybe because of that. And there's a cool section here where we get to see Eddie the Eel again. He doesn't do much in this playthrough, but he sings a song. And that's another point. Songs are abundant in this game. Every Everywhere you look. Not every everywhere, but most places you look, there's a song to be sung. Uh, if you see someone with an instrument, you click on the instrument, they'll sing you a song. Whether it's Ray, whether it's Mr. Triplefin, whether it's Eddie the Eel, sometimes just Freddy Luther will sing a song. And th there's songs of plenty. Some of them are better than others. Some of them have stuck in my head since I played this as a little kid. Like the one, the very beginning of the game where they're singing about going to school. I've had my breakfast. I've got my books. Comb my bed. Ready for learning, and you have some fun. Heading off to school, our day's begun. That song is permanently has a spot in my head. I don't know why, I don't know how to get it out of there, but it's in there forever. So my brain will just remind me, it's like, hey, remember that little song from Freddy Fish 2? Because now you do. Other than that part, there's one massive place in this game that is beyond iconic to me. And that's the movie theater. And the movie theater has, like the last game, as the theater has some little skits, little animations. As this one is the best, the theater experience in Freddy Fish games continues throughout the franchise. But this one, I think, has the best experience out of all of them. It has a classic commercial about worm noodles. You gotta have them. Mmm, mmm, worm noodles. Squishy, squashy, worm doodle in all your favorite flavors. Original, chocolate, sea cucumber, lemon, orange, red, and new fat free. Grab them, because you got to have them. Which, it, wasn't that just awesome? Like, squishy, squashy, worm doodles? Like, what does red taste like? It's one of my favorite flavors, apparently. It has a really sick trailer for what appears to be a certain uh, fox spy. So I hope... That becomes something one day. And of course, there's plenty, there's plenty of animal animations. There's also one called Godzilla, which made me chuckle because, you know, I'm a big Godzilla fan. So that was wonderful. But we get all the pieces and we bring them back. We capture ourselves a ghost and lo and behold, it's the sharks from the last game also working from the Squid Father, which is still a, a big old step down from the last game when the squid father wanted all the kelp seeds to like have a monopoly on food this time he just never had a toy before and it's like i don't understand it must have been like some mild backlash as to how dark the first game's plot was because like this one really overcorrects it and it's like this the stakes of this are not nearly as high as in 
any other humongous game, it feels like. Even when it's just Putt-Putt wanting to join the parade, at least we understand, like, that's the first adventure he goes on, and then it ramps up from there. This one is like a step back rather than a step up. I know trying to save the ocean is, is a big one to try to step up to, but man, this one does not hit the mark. Um, I know I kind of skimmed past some of the other puzzles and spots in this game, and honestly, because this one isn't my favorite of the Humongous games, it's probably my least favorite of the Freddy Fish ones when I looked at my timetable and which ones to play up next. It wasn't that I was dreading it, but I was looking forward to this one the least. I'm happy to have gone back and played it again, it's definitely one I replayed the lowest amount as a kid, though. I did not play this one very much. I do, like, remember certain parts, the Worm Doodle commercial, the song of the beginning, and meeting different characters and whatnot, every locale. But I remember going into it and thinking, I don't remember every single puzzle in this game. Luckily, I, like, through muscle memory or something, I flawlessly, like, passed it through it, not to pat myself on the back, but... I was able to just remember, like, oh, I need that, I need that, I need that, I need that. Even though, like, it's still at that earlier stage of Humongous Games where things kind of blend into the background a little bit. So it may be tougher to even discern, like, what is a required item and what is just a fun little animation. But, yeah, this one wasn't my favorite, but it does still have its charm. It did still fill me with that nostalgic warmness that I was looking for when, you know, starting this entire humongous journey that I'm going through. It was nice to go back, hit that little note a little bit, because yeah, it's it's not one I played a lot, but it still was charming enough to recommend giving a try. I it beat it in about 40 minutes, and that's with a little bit of messing around, but like I said, I just so happened to do it flawlessly the first time. It doesn't require a lot of backtracking to go back to things. If it does, it's like, go here, go somewhere else, and then come back again. That's basically it. So that was Freddy Fish 2, The Case of the Haunted Schoolhouse, a title that scared me as a kid, but definitely shouldn't have. Just the title. I'm not even talking about the game itself. The title was like, uh-oh, what's, like, a ghost? Like, oh, no. Like, I was a little bit of a, a scaredy cat when I was a kid. Uh, I think I've grown out of it more now, but... Yeah, just the title of a haunted schoolhouse, especially considering the first game had to do with, like, saving the planet. Yeah. Uh, warranted then, but it shouldn't have, because this game is a bit of a step down from the first. But it is still a worthy playthrough, at least if you can, you know, get this game on a Steam sale, or I don't think it's on. It might be on, like, PlayStation or Switch. I get lost because not all of them are on both, and some have some and some have the other. I don't know why, but that's just the case. But they're all on Steam, so, like, definitely if you can get them, play them on a PC, like, they're kind of meant to be played anyway, then that's probably your best bet. Look what we you found! You found the Guppy Toys! Hip hip hooray! We solved the mystery, Mrs. Croker! There wasn't really a ghost haunting the school. It was just those sharks pretending to be a ghost. Congratulations! You saved the school! So, have you played Freddy Fish 2 before? Is it your favorite? I would love to hear someone's opinion on if it's their favorite one, if they remembered it the best out of any of these. By all means, let me know down below. Thank you so very much for watching, and as always, like this if you like this, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you at some point.